welcome to Talk FC there and welcome back here to the channel guys. The Barcelona News Roundup coming up for you today and we are going to be discussing the team's training session once again this morning. We're also going to be talking about who's impressing in those early training sessions by view of the data. We're also going to be talking about Luis Suarez's recovery, Ivan Rakitic's future at Barcelona after he spoke publicly last night. And also, we're going to have the latest on Lataro Martinez with the transfer rumours. It's all coming up. In today's video, let's get to it. But if we do kick off once again with that morning training session from Barcelona at 9.30 a.m., the players arrive once again to train in those groups of 10. As we discussed in yesterday's video, and training once again was taking place there with the ball, there was rondos, there was different exercises and tactical work done as well. And it's really, really important here that every single day now we see that progress. We see there the players getting closer and closer to that match sharpness, that match fitness that we're going to need as soon as we return. And I want to talk Talk here about Luis Suarez. It came out this morning in sport that once again, much like yesterday, he completed part of the session there with the group, with the players around him. And in the next 10 days, sports say Suarez will be given the medical discharge. And that will mean he's 100% recovered. And that's going to happen there in the next 10 days, which is perfectly in time there. All in good time for the return of football, which should be coming. June the 12th. The players will return tomorrow once again at exactly the same time there, 9.30 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday for another training session and that they will mark three successive days, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, whereby the players are in for training as Kike Setien continues there that work on the field. And I also want to talk here about the stats because with the players there having been out on the pitch now for quite a decent amount of time since returning there from that isolation period, the Barcelona coaching staff have been tracking all of their movements, all of their distances, all of the different stats there relating to how the players are getting on because you know they've got those trackers on they've got the GPS trackers which give them every possible detail they would need on all the players to basically see who's doing well who's where they need to be who needs a bit more and what are the condition of all of the players now according to reports in Spain that came out yesterday the player right now who's posted the most impressive stats since training is resumed in terms there of the most ground covered and effectively who's worked the hardest it is Frankie de Jong. He is the man right now who's impressing in those training sessions, which, to be honest, is no surprise whatsoever. Because I remember there, when de Jong came in from Ajax's first training sessions at the club in pre-season, they were absolutely astounded there with the work that he was getting through, his recovery rates. Every single stat relating to de Jong was very, very impressive indeed. And he, of course, is somebody who brought a personal trainer with him when he came over from Ajax. So quite clearly there, de Jong is looking to be still in the best possible shape. And I think, in general, the reports coming out of Spain right now are basically saying the Barcelona coaching staff are very happy with the squad they've seen return and I think that's really good news that when they were in isolation I think the players were doing their exercises I think the club they were in contact with them very very regularly and the feeling is right now just like we've said in previous videos the squad are in much much better shape now than they were before the break and I think that's absolutely massive and that was something there that Rakitic actually admitted yesterday when he did that interview in public he said he felt much better following the break he said something actually they confirmed to me once I got back to the training ground because the tests also say that too. I feel good and I think that goes for everybody. Right now the feeling is very positive. But if we do indeed move on to that man, Ivan Rakitic, who, like I say, was speaking last night to Cope, where he addressed a number of pressing topics with regard to his future, and also where he may end up in the future. And I want to say, first of all, that Rakitic did admit that he remained very, very happy in Barcelona, and in particular, he remained fully focused there on the immediate future. He was looking forward there to being out on the pitch once again. He was looking forward to returning, although he did say in that interview that a return to the city of Seville, in the end, it was inevitable, but he didn't know when that was going to be. He said, right now, all I want to think about is Barcelona. We are going to return to Seville to live sooner or later. It's almost a certainty my wife wants to see her family. But right now, I'm focused on the club. But I do want to say, though, although he said that he was happy at Barcelona, although that he is focusing right now on that return of football, he did seem very frustrated with the club over their response or lack of to these recent exit rumours that we've heard coming out there about Rakitic's future at the club. He said, I've become used to my name coming out in the press. It's not something new for me. Of course, I would have liked that the president or Abidel would have come out to deny the rumours and say there's nothing to talk about. Bartomeu hasn't called me, but he can still do it. Maybe he'll be listening now and maybe he'll call me tomorrow. When I sign a contract, it's with the idea 
of fulfilling it. And those are big words there from Ryutic, pretty much publicly calling out the president and basically saying, look, I haven't been told anything. Why haven't you come to me and said, you know what? These rumors are true. These rumors are false. He hasn't given him any information whatsoever there. And it's yet another example, I feel, of that breakdown in relationship between Ryutic and the club. We've seen it now over the past few seasons. It's deteriorating year by year. And I just think here, once again, it's been no secret whatsoever. The club are actively trying to force out Rakitic, but quite clearly, he keeps pointing there to that contract. And if he does remain until the end of his current deal, he will have one more season at Barcelona until that deal comes to an end in 2021. But if we do now indeed move on to that transfer talk surrounding Lataro Martinez in particular, we spoke yesterday about whether our priority should be that centre forward position or should we be targeting there a centre back. But this morning, once again, it's all about Lataro. But I actually want to talk first about a deal that failed before we started targeting Lataro Martinez because MD came out this morning and actually claimed that Bartomeu had his sights set on a completely different forward. He actually wanted Harry Kane. And MD say that actually, just over a year ago now, Bartomeu called Daniel Levy, who's the chairman there at Tottenham, and he said, look, we want to sign Harry Kane. But MD say that conversation, it didn't last long at all, with Daniel Levy immediately slamming the door on any interest from Barcelona for Kane, with Kane a vital part of Tottenham's plans. But that there was a player that Bartomeu went for. Now he appears to have changed his target to Lataro Martinez, and he does appear this morning on the cover of MD with the headline, Strategic Signing. And MD basically go on there in that article to say that at 22 years old, Lataro Martinez is seen as the perfect signing there to strengthen the core of the squad for the long-term future. They mention there Frank de Jong. He's set to be somebody who's going to be in that midfield at Barcelona for a long, long time, along with Marc-Andre Ter Stegen there between the sticks. And they say that Lataro is the number nine they want to come in into that role. But I would like to say there, the board aren't really ones for long-term thinking, especially here in their final year of office. I don't think MD there can spin. This is some master plan by the board here to bring in somebody for the future. When right throughout their tenure, they haven't given a damn about the future of the club, but I also want to bring you something interesting on Lataro as well and our pursuit of the Argentine striker, because of course recently we've heard a lot of articles coming out in the Italian media and also in the Spanish media that have basically spoken about Lataro Martinez going to Barcelona and being helped by the arrival of Dries Mertens to Inter Milan, because they were saying basically that when Mertens comes in, he's a ready-made replacement there to come into their forward line, which would help Barcelona sign Lataro. But even though Mertens is set to be out of contract this summer, over the last day or so, his situation has changed very, very drastically. He was speaking with Inter. It did look as though he may go there. But right now, he is expected to sign a renewal at Napoli. He's going to extend that stay in Naples. And in doing so, potentially now, that has caused complications for Inter, for Lataro. If they sell Lataro, they will want to have a replacement in mind. Mertens could have been that man. He isn't any longer. So will that be jeopardising the negotiations going on right now? Can we even afford Lataro Martinez? As we've said before, interesting topics to bear in mind. And just finally, guys, I also want to bring you some news this morning on Mark Kukurea just before we do end today's video because previously we have spoken there about the fact that he does have that purchase option to go to Tafe for €6 million. Euros. But there were some reports a few weeks ago now that claimed that Barcelona were looking in to the possibility of bringing him back to the club for around €15 million Euros if they were to go down that road. But MD say that Barcelona have decided that's not going to be an option, that's not a road that we are going to go down, and Hitafe have all already communicated to the club, they are going to pay that 6 million euros, they are going to sign Kukurea on a permanent basis, and in the next season, he's either going to stay there, or Hitafe will sell him this summer for big money. That's the latest on Barca right now. So that there, guys, is what's going on in the world of Barcelona right now. Like I say, in general, I think it's just really great there to see the players back out in the field, back with the ball, back there in groups, training again. And it really won't be too long now. It won't be long at all until we start seeing the training go ahead as normal. I think we're going to keep making progress day in, day out, moving forward there, moving along in the process. And when that training starts again, when the group's back together, then it all starts to get real. Then we start counting down. I cannot wait to see the team back in action. The expectation is building. Please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Of course, I'll see you soon with plenty more videos to come. Thanks as always for your incredible support. But until next time, as always, Vizca, El Barca. Oh,